Over the past few years, you must have seen me do these interesting title animations for some of my videos and other places. And so I thought maybe I'll make a video on the basis of how I do these animations and what goes into creating them. I'm not even kidding when I say this, these, these are really simple animations and if you follow through with the examples, you can use this almost anywhere and they will really amp up the production quality of your videos. So with these techniques, you'll be able to apply it and create something of your own. So they, they, they're like a starter kit to make even more complex animations and we'll be doing it all in After Effects. So let's jump right in. Okay, so here I have a new project. Uh, first thing first, I'm gonna make a new composition and it's gonna be, let's start off with uh, 1080p. 24 frames a second and we're going to keep it at around probably 8 seconds so 08 cool okay so let's start with the word what do we call it title T -I -T -L -E. title so the font that I'm using that I currently in love with and I'm using it almost everywhere is uh, micro grammar D and it's like this very extremely bold sort of a font and it's just so cool dude all right so what I'm gonna do is paragraph align it to the center and press my Y button and get its anchor point to the center so I'm just gonna go to align um, center center both ways all right so we have our title over here all right so the first things first what you have to do is we have to split all of the letters so that we have individual controls for each of the letter so the method i'm going to use to split all of them up is firstly gonna duplicate these a bunch of times five to be exact and then i'm going to remove the redundant text from each of them so let's start with t Guys, this may not be the most efficient way. There might be something easier to work with. If, if there is, let me know because this seems really a bit of work here. Anyway, now that we have here, one important thing is all of their anchor points need to be at their own centers. So for example, the T, we will press the Y button and then shift control I mean uh, not shift control and then we can center them so I'm gonna do the same for all of these so control and then center this all right now that we have all of this set up I'm gonna right click create create shapes from text now we can do this individually create shapes from text so you don't need the text layers I'm just gonna remove them and the reason I'm making them into shapes is because you will see I, I'm going to add this bit of uh, individual char characteristic animation to each of them so they'll have little movements and little changes in their form so that's going to be something really cool and something that you guys can uh, alright now that we have them over here we are going to enable 3D for all of them so we have in like individual controls in 3d space for each of these letters do a bit of thinking what i'm gonna do is get the the main t from the front from sort of an angle from the left i'm gonna get it to where it is right now so i'm gonna keyframe the position to its present state move it around um around somewhere around two three seconds and we're gonna initially bring it a little here and then all the way to the front like just so okay so now we have something like that the thing is it, it's uh, it's a little too slow but i'm gonna start setting the time and pacing for it after i have animations for all of these individuals set okay so let's bring the eye from the bottom and so the final position has got to be keyframed and moved. Let's keep it all at the same point for now. And I'm just going to move this bottom all the way until it's very visible. And um, so I have something really interesting with the E. 
this is why I converted it to a shape. So what I'm going to do is get into the contents of the shape path. I'm going to add a keyframe here. So the final look is going to be around here. And that's going to be the E V C here. Before that, it's going to be something really different. So I'm going to manipulate the word itself by selecting these keyframes and uh, moving them all the way to the end. Probably these somewhere here. So they so they go something like that, and then they go like that. But make note that the animations are still not properly timed, so it, it is gonna look a little weird for now. But <laughs> stick with me. All right. So L. I'm gonna do something similar maybe in 3d um, or maybe from the top let's bring it from the top and I'm just gonna go to position click on the keyframe take it and the first frame I'm just gonna take it all the way to the top I'm holding shift so that I have extra movement and cool so now we have something of okay so here's here's something that I just thought would be really cool so now we have two T's here so once the center t comes into picture what i'm gonna do is we don't we are not gonna use this t and instead let's duplicate this and we're gonna add an animation for example uh, let's go go angle rotation i'm gonna add keyframes to all of this all of the rotation and the position so now we have then i'm gonna press u so i can see all of the keyframes in the in the timeline and now i'm gonna go a little forward i'm gonna literally rotate it the other way that's gonna be 180 and in the process i shall move it to the left with equal distance from I over here so the animation is gonna look that like that like like sort of like a mirror image right uh, cool I think we have like a very base that's that we've set and this is what I do for all of my titles so now comes the fun part is animating it right so first we'll go with the E for that we're gonna do this snappy animation where this bit snaps instantly so I'm gonna go and add a keyframe, easy ease. I'm gonna keep this in speed graph and I'm gonna drag this all the way to probably the center of it. And now we have something like that. And we're gonna do the same here and cool. So we're gonna add another easy ease take it and push it all the way to the center so we have this one instant where it's the fastest like that and instantly it's it's a lot better and that's the trick guys i keep telling in some of my videos uh, easy easing and using curves for keyframes is so much important especially in animation to add a bit of snap or the smooth smoothness of it otherwise it looks very robotic and people are gonna instantly know it's not good animation and so the rest of the movement over here I'm going to bring it I'm gonna start it from somewhere here so I'm gonna probably cool so add another keyframe easy ease and just gonna go somewhere like that and uh, maybe we're gonna ease this as well I'm gonna probably make this a little more slower so I'm gonna pull it a little outward and cool all right that is super and I don't need the part before because I want it to appear sort of sequentially I'm gonna hold alt and this uh, square bracket inside there you go open bracket now we have that so it doesn't pop up it pops up only before just before it it appears all right so let's work on the t now which is coming from the center so all right so i'm gonna enable keyframes for all the rotation and put them in the final 
point where it's in its final state of position so here i'm going to sort of um, rotate it this manner this is something that i want but again uh, easing of the keyframes is very important so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to keep ease all of them take this and drag it all the way in so now i have something like that we will speed it up a bit more decrease the time span of it so something like that cool all right mm -hmm. i'm going to take this and uh, remove the rest of it the same thing alt and uh, open bracket so i'm going to end the timeline there and the moment this arrives i am going to get in the eye so again position so something interesting to do here is right at this point i'm going to give it like a small jerk so i'm going to add another keyframe i'm going to ease this one and then going to sort of ease this one as well so let's see what how it looks so we have that jerk animation but it's a little too slow so i'm going to do something like this cool so we have that and that okay so another interesting thing that you can do is play with the opacity so i'm going to press d and i open up the opacity time so the point here when it's right it's just snapping is where i'm going to make it full opacity and the previous one is going to be absolutely transparent so we have something like this super and uh, cool what do you have so far so now the the moment the t stops coming here and we have i come to its place i'm going to get the other t and i'm going to do the flip thing all right so to improve this i am going to ease all of them and same thing smooth them out smooth them out so we have something like that i'm going to keep it a very short frame because i do not want that slow speed i want it to be kind of fast something like that that works so we have this 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 and now the l is being very slow so here's what i'm going to do so this needs to happen together and maybe you can do the same animation we did for the eye a bit of jerk until this point add a position keyframe and then ease this like that and ease this as well and now we have something like that i'm going to slow it down a bit here I'm just going to tweak it so you know sort of get a good animation here. Okay, that works. So same thing until it pops the opacity is going to gradually increase to 100. So I'm going to put 0 over here and a 100 at point. So we have something like that. Cool. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press U so I see all the keyframes. I'm going to probably drag this so I can see them better. And so let's start. So we have the T coming in. The T stops here. So we have to bring the T a little, little inside. So we start with T. I comes in. We have the T outline. The moment T comes it duplicates to the other side and as soon as that happens we get the l happening maybe here we have the l happening and simultaneously we'll have the all right that's the final product now i'm going to tell a few things that you can layer this with and the first thing being a posterized time so now this is an interesting effect i'm just going to hold alt control and y open up an adjustment layer i am going to add posterize time so the crazy part about this is 
generally animations nowadays tend to mimic the ones in the past with the lower frame rate and so i typically put somewhere around 15 and this totally changed the look of the animations i'm just going to give you an example right now you see it has a bit of that choppy flavor to it and that's the best part about the old animations and that's what makes you feel nostalgic when you see certain animations today made by some amazing designers out there another subtle effect that you can add which people don't really notice is a strobe effect okay now what i typically do is uh, just add an exposure on this exposure and so the moment you play with the exposure it has the flicker effect so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go somewhere here and uh, add a keyframe exposure at 0 preview one step to the right so probably minus minus 6 okay minus 6 should do minus 0.6 i mean and we're going to go one step next and we're going to bring it back to 0 so we have something like that right and i shall use a a keyframe expression you can either just copy this and constantly paste it throughout the the whole timeline or you can just click this point and press alt when you clicking it so now you have an expression tab so here i'm going to go to um, property loop out duration type cycle duration equal to 0 so this is what i'm going to do so what it basically does is it's constantly going to loop these keyframes so yeah that's the best part of a keyframe expression that you can just loop out stuff um in time so basically it just goes through time again and again until the end of the timeline that way if you have an effect it will keep repeating itself and now we will have something like this cool so what i'm going to do is going to take both of these going to drag it to the center uh, to the start of the frame and probably going to stop it right here especially the strobe effect i'm going to stop it right here so we have something like that it finally ends subtly so one final step that i like to do is sort of have a, a larger control in terms of uh, its size scale position and stuff so i create a null object and link all of them using a a uh, pick whip and i put it connected to the null so now i have sort of like a global control for all of it so what i'm going to do is the the moment the e lands i am going to add a scale and the next frame of the scale would be somewhere here and i kind of take it a little back like this little pop i'm going to add a keyframe i mean i'm going to easy ease the frame i'm sorry um do the same for this one and we'll sort of bring it to the center right, so now we have something like that and an even cooler one is sort of extend this and bring the ease almost to the center so now you're sort of biased with the larger amount of easing on one side so now you have like a little more cooler effect so this is how it's going to look at the end and now you can have all sorts of customizations on this and here's a few examples and cool i hope this was helpful for you guys and i'm telling you stuff like this is instantly going to kick up your game in terms of production value and uh, let me know if this was helpful if it was uh, leave a thumbs up to the video subscribe if you're new and uh, drop something in the comments you can also ask a question if if it's a tutorial that you ask i shall make it possible so let me know that as well cool i'll see you guys in the next video i guess